Coming up on the October edition of Rope TV, we get to hang out with a rugby league legend. As a former player, it's wonderful to be a part of an event like this. We're joined in the studio by the city of Moreton Bay Mayor, Peter Flannery. Hi, I'm Mayor Peter Flannery, the Mayor of the city of Moreton Bay, and I'm looking forward to being on the next episode of Rope TV. We count down to the grand opening of Rope's latest social enterprise, Industry & Co Collective. Plus we have an inner studio performance by singer-songwriter Aspie Jones. This is Rope TV. Hi everyone, and welcome to October's edition of Rope TV. Ashley's away this month, but I have our Rope TV reporter, Brandon, in filling in for her. Hi Brandon. Hi Kale. it's great to be sitting in this big chair tonight. I'm really excited about the stories and people we got lined up for this episode. Don't forget, if you're watching, make sure you comment in the chat and give us a like. Before we go any further, we better see what else is going on. It's time for the news headlines with Aaron. Thank you, Kale. Hello, everyone. Aaron Lucas here with your news headlines for October 2, 2023. It's been a bittersweet end to the long weekend for Queensland footy fans, with thousands turning out to congratulate Brisbane's NRL and AFL teams who both lost their grand final games on the weekend. The Lions went down to Collingwood 86 to 90, while the Broncos collapsed in their final quarter of the game against the Panthers. They lost by just two points. The Broncos were still treated like champions today as thousands gathered for a fan day at Brisbane's River Stage, while Lions fans gathered at the club's headquarters in Springfield to congratulate the team. Now, don't forget, former Broncos legend Petro Sivanasiva will be on the show shortly. The federal government is setting up a task force to coordinate its response to the Disability Royal Commission. The 5,000 page report was handed down last week and includes 222 recommendations that call for sweeping changes across all areas of society, from education and employment to the justice system and governance. Some of the key recommendations relate to ending segregation in society, including phasing out group homes, segregated employment and segregated education, such as special schools. Early voting in the voice referendum opens this week. The referendum will determine whether an Indigenous voice, which would advise Parliament and Executive Government, will be enshrined in the Constitution. The official voting day is October 14. However, if you can't get to a polling booth on that day, you can now cast your vote at the early vote centres. You are up to date now. It is back to Kale and Brandon. Thanks for your update, Aaron. So the 40 season coming to an end over the weekend with the NRL Grand Final, it got me thinking about how those players became so good. Well, no doubt they did a lot of training in the lead up and I recently joined a group of participants who were given the opportunity to learn some footy skills from a rugby league legend. My name's Arthur Vernon. I'm one of the founders of Disability Rugby League. This is the 11th year. Um, it gets bigger every year we do it. The idea is to run one on the north side and one on the south side. My patron of many years is Petro Siva and he's always been really good with his time towards this activity. Um, we've got nearly 60 people here today doing it. Oh, g'day, uh, my name's Petro Sivanasiva. Uh, I'm a former NRL player, uh, retired back in 2012. So uh, great to be back out here. It's been uh, a long time since I've been back out here. I played all my junior football for the Redcliffe Dolphins uh, and some lots of great memories being back here. But uh, we're here today uh, for our uh, Different Abilities Rugby League. Uh, and it's run by Arthur Vernon, a great man uh, who's been running this concept uh, for the past 11 years. To them, 
it means a lot because they aren't as lucky as the rest of us to be able to do this all the time. But we're looking into the future of starting a tag competition for them at the moment and then to lead into tackling. Today we're here at the Difference Ability Development Day. Um, we're bringing um, some of the participants from Rope to have a fun day learning new skills. Um, they socialise and just have a really fun day and Arthur does an amazing job putting all this together so participants like mine and ours and other groups can come together and have a great day. Good afternoon everyone, my name is um, Cheryl Figueres. I am um, the service manager from Multicap Limited. It's my first time myself and I could just see the smile and it's it's really just a priceless moment for our customers so I really want this to keep going for, for them because it's really good opportunity for them to be a part of the community. Yeah I, I guess for me um, you, you know as a former player it's wonderful to be a part of an event like this. He's been doing this for over 11 years now and I've been fortunate enough to participate in, uh, in a few in the past and it's great when he got, gave me the phone call and asked if I'd be keen to, to, to jump back in again uh, of course. Yeah I had fun I would come back every time. I um, mean, yeah, it's another nice day actually, might I add. I love it all. We all love this game and we all want to be a part of it and I think community days like this are so special. If you look at the smiles on the people's faces around here, you'll see what it means to them and that's what it means to me to see them smile. That looked like a really fun day. It was. And a big shout out to the organisers for putting it all together. Absolutely. Have you ever wondered what it's like to navigate your way around streets or buildings with a physical disability? A program called The Realistic Race allows participants to gain first-hand insight into a disability for a brief amount of time while completing a series of tasks. The Realistic Race is happening in Raycliffe later this month and the city of Morton Bay Mayor is going to be taking part. Please welcome Peter Flannery. Thank you gentlemen, it's absolutely a pleasure to be here and uh, I look forward to our, our chat today and learn a little bit more about uh, what the Morton Bay City has in plan. Thanks so much for joining us, Mayor Flannery. Before we talk about the race, we thought it might be nice to, for you to give us an insight into your job as mayor. Yeah, certainly, it's, uh, it's a big job. I've been doing it now for just over three and a half years. Uh, responsible for about 500,000 people. So half a million people live in the local government area of the city of Moreton Bay. Uh, it's an enjoyable job, it's a stressful job at times, but we have 12 councils that represent a different part of the, the region. And I'm the mayor that sits across the whole top of that. So it's an exciting job. We get to meet many, very, very um, variety of people that live in the Moreton Bay. And uh, it's an exciting job. We can deliver infrastructure and, and improve people's lives. Moreton Bay region recently had a name change to City of Morton Bay. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, we were um, Morton Bay Regional Council and that happened in 2008 when the amalgamation happened and three councils came together. And uh, we thought, well, regional didn't really represent who we are and what we are in, in Morton Bay. So uh, we put an application to the state government to change to become Morton Bay City Council. We're gonna brand ourselves as the City of Morton Bay because we're pretty unique. We're a polycentric city. We wanna do a city that's different to what people normally know as a city and have many different centres so people can uh, work close to home and don't have to travel on that mad road into Brisbane every day and have a better lifestyle and more time with their family and friends. And, and as Mayor, you're taking part in this upcoming realistic race. What do you think you're in for? I'm not sure. It's going to be a surprise for me when I turn up there on the day. Um, but it's our, ability, our, our chance, I suppose, to get out there and experience the, the um, the impacts it has when you have a disability, whether that's through um, sight or your mobility or whatever it might be, uh, we're going to experience that and actually going to look for the, um, the learnings out of that to improve our community and how we deal with accessibility through our region. In the race, some people are placed in wheelchairs and, other are, and others are blindfolded. Do you know what you'll be doing? No, it's going to be a surprise for me. Um, I'm looking forward to it, so I won't find out till the day. Uh, whether I'll be blindfolded or put in a wheelchair and then uh, we get to go around and experience uh, those little things that make a big difference in people's lives who have a disability and how we can then as a council try and maybe improve those things or, or make them a little less of an impact to those people's lives um, uh -huh. in Morton Bay. 
Why is it so important for you to participate in the realistic race? Often we have people coming representing um, different organisations in the community uh, and often unless you experience it yourself and see it firsthand yourself, you don't appreciate their point of view and their position. So uh, looking forward to going and experiencing that and seeing how the impact it is, how it is and how it impacts me. Um, and then that way we can help try and influence changes through our council and how we do things. We really appreciate you taking the time to meet us, to meet with us. And we wish you all the best in the real estate race. Thank you very much. I'm sure it's a great experience and uh, look forward to chatting again one day with you guys. Indeed. Please thank City, City of Morton Bay Mayor, Peter Flannery. Still to come on Rope TV, we have a studio performance from Aspie Jones. Hi, I'm Aspie Jones. Stick around because I'll be singing my song Last Nerve soon on Rope TV. If you love Rope TV, don't forget to hit the like button on this video and also tap share so your family and friends can also tune in. You can also find us on YouTube. Make sure you click subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you'll get notified whenever we post a new video. Thanks for supporting Vogue TV. If you're a regular viewer of Rope TV, you probably already know about our social enterprises, Industry & Co Cafe and Industry & Co Lawn Care. Well now Rope is about to jump into the world of retail and you're invited to check it out. They are second-hand shops, recycled clothing stores and fetish shops. But now there's a whole new kid on the block and it's shaking up the industry. Industry and Co Collective is a unique retail experience and is based on the Reckler Peninsula, just north of Brisbane. In fact, it's just around the corner from BG's Way. So, why is this store different? Just step inside and you'll realise this shop is like no other. So the whole idea of Industry & Co Collective was about doing something a little bit different. So my thought was to actually get there and go, well, let's do this differently. Let's change it around a little bit. And it was all around getting there and giving, giving everyone the experience, that, that boutique customer experience with second-hand clothing prices. I'm Leanne Hughes and my position is store manager here. There's something for everybody here, seriously. So we have women's wear, men's wear, children's wear. We have home wear, so lots of soft furnishings, cushions, throws. Um, we have shoes. Oh my gosh, we have some great shoes. Essentially, it's a boutique. So we have been extremely lucky. If you look around the shop, you'll see there's a lot of high-end things that are in here. We even have a designer rack at the back that has things like Alexander McQueen. Um, we've got you know Louis Vuitton um, bits and pieces in here as well. So that's the beauty of it all, which is really, really great. There's also another unique aspect to Industry and Co Collective. So Industry & Co Collective come about because Rope wanted to get there and provide another opportunity for our participants. Something a little bit different, something a little bit out of the ordinary and something that you wouldn't expect from an organisation to do. So we at the moment have three participants doing traineeships in Industry & Co Collective which is absolutely fantastic. So it means that they're getting on the job training, they're getting a certificate in the industry which means that once they finish 12 months with us they can go out into the, into the open employment agencies out there and be able to get them look for employment other than with Rope. So this is new to me, um, I've only been with Rope a short time um, but it is so rewarding just in that time. When they leave here you know they will be qualified and they will be in the real world, they'll know what they're doing so it's going to give them confidence. You'll never know what you're going to find. I picked up these. Thank you. It's definitely worth checking it out. Thank you, ladies. I wouldn't mind checking that place out. Well, lucky for you and everyone else watching, Energy & Co Collective opens tomorrow. All the details are in the chat. 
Well, that went fast. It's almost time for us to say goodbye, but that also means it's time for some entertainment. We're about to be joined in the studio by a very talented musician and singer. Aspie Jones has been riding, busking, and yegging with his original songs since he was 16 years old. He's won several competitions, including a band showdown at the Gimpy Music Muster. He writes tunes about his unique perspective on life, good mental health, and the difficulties faced as he's learned to deal with anxiety and autism. He's going to sing his original song called Last Nerve. Please welcome Aspie Jones. <laughs> Everything but stable. Way too long and it'll go. With the words from the back of my throat. But I had no problem with the speed I was at. But I lost my nerve and I lost my mind. Retracing my steps gets me. Seem like bliss when you let me out in the cold. It's nothing to pray when you walk out with nothing but scratch. Does it mean that you're so way more you gain? If you want to be equals, there's some baggage you can have. TV is produced by Rope 
a non-profit organisation providing support services to people living with intellectual disabilities. We empower personal development through the provision of information, education and life skills training. Our in-centre and community-based programs educate and encourage participants to develop life skills, including computer skills, social and interpersonal skills, travel and independent living skills. To find out more, visit our website or connect with us on social media. Rogue TV is proudly filmed at the studios of Trending Media Australia.